I'm Kerry, this is Laura. We have got four-year-old twin girls, Emmy and Olive. Emmy's deaf, Olive is hearing. Emmy was diagnosed as deaf when she was about three weeks old. She was diagnosed as moderately deaf in both ears. She was fitted with hearing aids when she was about three and a half, four months old. Her hearing loss has been progressive, so she's now severely deaf. The hospital put us in touch with a teacher of the deaf straight away. She sent us a lot of resources to have a look at. We just wanted to be told what was the best thing to do. Teacher of the deaf just helped us interpret the information, made us realise that we had to make our own choices and that there wasn't a right way and a wrong way. There's very conflicting views on whether you should use sign, whether that helps the development of speech, whether it hinders the development of speech. Our teacher of the deaf urged caution really and sent us lots of resources to read so that we could make an informed decision. As hearing people, our focus was on the development of speech. So although we did some signing very early on, we then pulled back from that for a long time. In hindsight, I don't know that that was the right thing to do because we went on holiday when we spent the best part of two weeks with her in and out of a swimming pool in the sea, mainly without her hearing aids in, and we suddenly realised that we could not really communicate with her very well at all. So that was the point at which we then thought again, hang on a minute, signing will be a, a really important thing for her, and also wanting her to be part of the deaf community. Initially, we put them into the local nursery, and that worked really well for a while, until we realised that Emmy's speech was still not coming on as much as it should be. So we made the decision that we would pull Emmy and Olive out of nursery and we would use a, a childminder. The reason for that was it's a sort of perfect environment for a deaf child, one-to-one -one speech, option to use the radio mic. Making decisions about schools probably been the hardest thing we've yeah. we've had to do so far. Ten visits later, a lot of our friends would go to one or two schools and then pick their favourite. We yeah probably went to eight or ten schools. We rocked up with our list of questions. We put every school through their paces in terms of making sure they were willing and able to provide the support that Emmy would need. She's a fantastic, bright, lively child with plenty of potential. We just want her to be able to achieve that potential. I think when there's a decision to be made, we talk about it ourselves. We always listen to the advice from the professionals that we've been working with for a long time now, the audiologist, the teacher of the deaf. We definitely talk to other families as well if we have the opportunity. And then we just try and weigh it all up and decide what, what we think is the best in that circumstance for our child and our family. I think, like we say, there's always going to be points where decisions have to be made and I guess we'll just have to continue to try and approach them in the way that we have now, which is all the information that we can, having a good hard think about it, possibly a good cry sometimes, and then come out with a plan. For more information to help you make informed decisions on issues such as communication, hearing technology and choosing childcare or schools, visit our website or contact our free phone helpline. <laughs>